Okay, well that's right. In today's video, we're going to be going over AC power for RL circuits. And this is the circuit that we have. We have a 150 ohm resistor and it is placed in series with a 750 milli Henry inductor. And we have a voltage source that has uh, 230 volts and the frequency of that source is 55 hertz. And you can see this is a diagram of our circuit here. And in this video, in the next, hopefully not more than 10 minutes, we're going to do all the following things. We're going to determine the circuit impedance. We're going to determine the RMS current through the circuit. We're going to determine the power factor and the impedance phase angle for that circuit. We're going to determine the real power, the reactive power. And then we're going to draw the power triangle and determine the apparent power consumed by that circuit. And we'll talk a little bit about a power factor also. So let's get started with that right now. We're going to start, as I said, with determining the circuit impedance for that circuit. Okay, here's the here's the circuit again. Here's the information that we were given. And you should know now that the equation for the impedance is the impedance, which is Z, is equal to the square root of R squared, the resistance squared, times the uh, inductive reactance. We don't know the inductive reactance. We know the inductor is a 750 millihenry inductor, but we don't know the inductive reactance. So we're going to calculate the inductive reactance first. That would be 2 times pi times the frequency times the induct times the inductance of the inductor. And that is written out like this. 2 times pi times 55 times 750 times 10 to the minus 3 henrys. Minus 3 because it's milli henrys and milli is minus 3 henrys. So there we go with our milli henry. We calculate that and we get that the capacitive, uh, no, the capacitive, the inductive reactance for that um, uh, inductor is uh, 259 ohms. Now we know R because we're given R, we know XL because we just calculated that and we can calculate the impedance of that circuit which is the square root of 150 squared plus 259 squared. We take the square root of those and we get that the impedance of that circle, circle of that circuit is 300 ohms. That's the sum of all the resistances and the reactances. Okay? So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. That's the first thing we want to do is to this, uh, determine the circuit impedance. Letter B, the next thing is we're going to determine the RMS current. So that's the current RMS through the circuit. There's the impedance. We're going to use Ohm's law, V equals I times R. This is for AC circuits, so we want to write down V equals I times Z. That's the sum of all the resistances and the impedances and um, or the reactances, excuse me. And um, uh, let's see, then we're just going to solve for the current. And I put RMS because we want to know the RMS current, which means we need to know the RMS voltage. And we don't know the RMS voltage. When it says Vs here, V of the source, that's usually taken to be the maximum voltage, the maximum voltage. So in order to calculate the RMS voltage, it's simply the max voltage divided by the square root of 2. And that gives us that it's the 230 divided by the square root of 2. And that gives us that the... RMS voltage is 163 volts, and now we can use this equation to calculate the RMS current, and that gives us the RMS current is equal to 163 divided by 300, and we get that the current through that circuit, is, the RMS current through that circuit is um, 0 0.54 amperes. Okay, so that was letter A, and that was letter B, and now we can go on and we can determine the power factor and the phase angle. Now, a lot of this is just based on uh, <clears throat> like the impedance triangle or the power triangle. So we can use uh, uh, the, the cosine. You can use any cosine, sine, or tangent, but usually the power factor, we use the cosine um, of the phase angle, and the cosine of the phase angle is R divided by Z because the cosine, let's see, SOCA is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the adjacent is the resistance, and the uh, hypotenuse is the impedance for that impedance triangle. So we get that that's uh, R divided by Z, which is 150 divided by 300 ohms, and we get that the power factor for that circuit is 0 0.5. Now, that's not a very good power factor, but that's what the power factor is in this case. And we can also calculate the phase angle. We just need to know what the cosine, the angle whose cosine is 50, and that's, or we can say the power factor is 50%, and then the, um, the, the angle whose cosine is 50, and that angle is 60 degrees. So the uh, phase angle for that circuit is 60 degrees. All right? So that's letter C, 
And now we can go on and we can calculate the real and the reactive power. And we have an equation for the real power is uh, V RMS times the RMS current times the cosine of the, of the phase angle. And we have that for the reactive power, we use the symbol Q. This is the reactive power. And we like to have different symbols for different things. So once again, we're calculating power. So we use the RMS values. That's the RMS voltage and the RMS current. For the reactive power, we use the sine of the phase angle. And we get to plug the values in is 163 volts times 0.54 amperes, like we calculated on the previous slide, times the cosine of the phase angle, which is 60. And that gives us 44 watts. That's the real power of that circuit. Now, for the reactive power, we do the same thing. Basically, it's 163 times 0.54 times the sine of 60. And we like to use a different unit, although it's the same value, really. And that's, we get 76 VAR, which is volt amperes. A volt ampere is the same thing as a watt. We put an R because it's the reactive power. But these two uh, units are equivalent to each other. So if you want to see how you can get those to be, be equivalent to each other and show that they're equivalent, it's pretty interesting. Good thing to do, a little practice. But those two units are equivalent to each other. And so one is 76 VAR, and the real power is 60, no, excuse me, 44 watts. Okay, now we can do letter E. This is the first, the first thing. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to draw the power triangle, and we're going to determine the apparent power consumed by that circuit. Now, you don't have to draw the power pa power pack of power, the power angle, the power triangle to determine that, but it's a, just a graphical representation. If you know the equation, it's also based on the Pythagorean theorem. But let's just draw it. It's a good visual. We draw the power, the, um, the real power, along that x-axis, the positive x-axis, just like we draw the resistance when we're doing our impedance triangle. It's kind of the same general idea, the rules for drawing the, the, the triangle. And since this is an inductive circuit, and we have an inductor, and we have uh, reactive power, we draw that along the positive y-axis. And you can see we can move, we're going to add those vectorially to get the apparent power. And you can see we have a right triangle. And the hypotenuse of that right triangle is S, which we call the apparent power of that circuit. And then the angle between the uh, real power and the apparent power is the phase angle. And you get the same phase angle whether you do this for the impedance triangle or for the power triangle. But you can see we have, we know P and we know Q, so we can solve for S once again using the Pythagorean theorem. S the apparent power is equal to the real power times the reactive power. We've got to square both the real power and the reactive power, and we add them together and take the square root, and you get that S is equal to 44 squared plus 76 squared, and you take the square root of that, and you get that, that um, the apparent power is 88 VA. Now, we don't put uh, a, a VAA, but that's, once again, VA is volt amperes. It's the same thing as a watt, but... Um, you know, since the, uh, uh, the the inductor doesn't do any real work, we'd like to give it a different unit. In this case, it's VA uh, for the units for the apparent power. Now, you can also there just use this equation to calculate the apparent power. You don't have to draw the power triangle, but once again, I said it's like a good rep visual representation. It's just S, the apparent power, is equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current, and you'll do that. You can see you multiply 163 times 0 0.54, you get the same answer. So it's good to do that maybe more than one way. Check your answer, make sure you get the same answer, and then that should give you some confidence that you maybe have the right answer, okay? And I think there was one other thing we were going to do, which we're going to, in this case, um, figure out the phase angle using the um, using the, uh, the power values that we got, which is, once again, it's a tangent. We're going to use a tangent. You can use any ta tangent, sine, cosine, tangent. Usually this is done with a tangent, since that's kind of the things we were given, so to speak, before we calculated the apparent power. So the tangent is the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, right? So cut toa, 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 opposite over adjacent. And you just plug those values in, 76. Uh, um, that should be 76 VAR, like this is down here, VAR. This should be VAR, not just V, not volts. 76 VAR divided by 44 watts, and you get the same angle uh, is uh, 60 degrees. So you see the same angle as the um, impedance triangle as long as you, um, you know, with, you use the um, power values. Okay, so there you go. We did all of that. I think, I hope that was less than 10 minutes. Um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. 
That is power. This was RL circuits. I did RC circuits. And coming up, of course, will be RLC circuits. More fun than you could ever imagine with AC circuits and power. Thanks for watching. Um, please do all of the following four things before you go. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below and don't forget sharing is caring share this video with all of your friends and show them much you care thanks we'll see you in the next video